Today's Tame Your Talent lesson is stage etiquette. Now, believe it or not, when you're on a stage and you have a microphone in your hand, there is some etiquette when it goes along to it. Now, if you're just starting out, you may, what? Etiquette? I have to have stage etiquette when it comes down to it? Yes, it's very important to have stage etiquette. And one of the things I want to talk about, of course, in stage etiquette is body posture. Body posture, very important. Now, if you look at how I'm standing right now on the stage, it's very comfortable. You see the hands the way I'm talking to you right now? This is a comfortable state of being. I'm relaxed. I'm not getting edgy about what I'm doing, okay? And one of the things you hear about body posture with a lot of people is, what do I do with my hands? I don't know what you should do with your hands, okay? But I do know that it needs to be natural when you use your hands, okay? People can tell when you're nervous when you're using your hands in a certain way, okay? Now, one of the ways is like if you're nervous, your tendency is to kind of be inside and kind of shrunk in and just like, okay, everybody, and your shoulders are together. You don't want to spread out. You don't want to be open. You're just more like this. And see, that's really tough to do because then your hands, where do your hands end up being? They end up being below your waist. That's not where you want your hands. You want your hands in a comfortable situation. So if you're talking to a crowd and you're speaking to everyone, you're using your hands properly. You're not putting them in your face. You're just using your hands the way. So body posture, one of those things that can be easily overlooked, but it is very important when it comes down. How do you stand? Well, first off, you don't want to slouch. I showed you that nervous feeling. Well, slouching is just as bad too. Like, like that's not professional. Is that professional? Do you guys feel that that's professional? No, it's not professional. So pre preparing yourself or standing in a positive manner and standing like this, look, standing like this. And if you're worried about your hands, one of the things I always do with the hands, if I'm worried about using them like this, you can always put your hands behind you and speak just like this. That way they're not flailing in front of you. So, so the hand thing is kind of important. I mean, some people, you, if you're like this person, you don't like what you're doing, then sometimes I just control them and hold them just like that, and it's an easy way to kind of solve that problem. But for me, I use the hands the way I use my hands, so I can't tell you the proper way to do it, but maybe notice when you're in a conversation with someone and you're explaining something, notice what you're doing with your hands. That's a good way to check that out. All right, let's talk about... Sit or stand, what is better? This is one of those things that's almost age old when people talk about should I sit or should I stand? Now, for me, as a long time radio DJ, I've been doing this for so many years, I've always found that when you stand, you tend to have a little more energy. When you're delivering a speech, when you're talking to a crowd, you tend to deliver it just a little bit better when you're standing. And I feel that's because your organs, all your body organs are not crushed together and you're sitting and you're in a slouch mode. You're standing. Now, you can't always stand, right? There's not every situation can you stand up. There could be something you're doing where you're sitting at a round table and everyone's sitting and there's microphones in front of you and you have to talk on these microphones. Well, that's a different story and you just have to make the adjustments to that. But I always feel that if you have the choice, I feel that you should definitely Try to stand when delivering without sitting. It gives you more energy. I feel like it gives your, your lungs more, your diaphragm more. You're able to deliver more of what you're trying to do. So for me, it's always about standing when it comes to body posture. Let's talk body movement now. Well, that goes back to the hands, and that goes back to what you're doing on stage. Well, when you're on stage, you need to kind of have what just a, a comfortable feel on stage. And, and if you're, and here's, here's an example of being not comfortable on stage. When you, you're, you're kind of, uh, you're just, okay, um, you're tentative, you, you're, you're walking around, you, you don't feel good. It just, it feels awkward, okay? So you don't want to be awkward. You do not want to do that. So awkward body movements definitely don't work. So if you're a person who likes to walk a little bit, that is okay, but just, Know your realm. And I'll tell you right now, I covered this in some of my other classes. You definitely want to know where your speakers are too. Now that's in some of the higher announcing classes. You learn where you need to stand so you're not feeding back on a microphone in the speakers. That's a whole other thing. But you just want to have good body movement. Now here's what I would call good body movement. You're talking to the crowd. 
Hello everybody and welcome out. It's good to have everybody outside here with me. I'm happy to have you enjoying the time I get to spend with all of you out here today. See the body movement, see how it's relaxed, see how I'm moving slow and see how I'm talking to the people like this, I'm doing this. That's proper body movement. And you know what also helps you have proper body movement? Is a sweet spot, right? You gotta have your sweet spot. So for me, I have to have a spot that I call the sweet spot. And what the sweet spot is when it comes to announcing is a spot that you always want to gravitate to. It's the spot that you want to go to, start when you're starting your announcing, end when you end your announcing in that sweet spot, and stay around that sweet spot. For me, the sweet spot is dead center here. So what I'm doing here is I'm staying around the sweet spot. I'm talking to the crowd this way. I'm talking to the crowd this way, but I'm still in that sweet spot. But I'm rotating around it in a proper way. So body posture covered that. There's a sweet spot. Your body movement should be relaxed on that too as well. Next thing in stage etiquette that I want to talk about is graze, not glaze. What the heck does that mean? Graze, not glaze? Are you kidding me? All right, well, picture this. There's a cow in this beautiful field. Okay, he's just roaming around, he's eating grass, he's grazing in the pasture. So he's going back and he's going forth and side to side. That's what the cow's doing. He's grazing, okay? So when I talk about grazing and announcing, that's scanning the crowd. One of the things you don't want to do when it comes to announcing is get stuck on an individual. Unless you're having a conversation with that individual, you don't want to get stuck with that individual looking at them. So that's what I talk about, graze, not glaze. You graze the crowd. You look across the crowd side to side, okay? And when you're speaking, you're talking to this crowd side to side. You're not focusing on one person. You're going side to side and talking to, the, to everyone so they all feel like you're talking to them individually. So what happens was when you glaze, when I talk about glaze, that means staring at something. When you stare at something, like let's, I'm staring at the camera red light right now. See, I'm glazing. You don't want to glaze, okay? I got to stop that. That actually, ah, that messed me up. Okay. <laughs> you got to do it right. So don't stare at one thing graze, don't glaze. So look around the crowd. And one of the things I always talk about when I talk about announcing to big crowds, I find it so much easier to announce to a crowd of 10,000 people as to a crowd of 10. Think about it. You're like, Brad, what? 10,000 people? You're more comfortable talking to 10,000 people than 10? Yeah, and you know why? Because it's easier to graze when you're with 10,000 people. It's a mass sea of people, so it's easy not to focus on one person. So it's easier to graze and not glaze when it comes down to it and not stare at one particular item. So that is one of the things that people just cannot understand, the fact that I could be more comfortable with a bigger crowd. And, and still, when it comes down to it, if you have the smaller crowd, you still have to do it that way. You still have to not focus on one because if you focus on one person, you start thinking, what is that person thinking? And then it takes you out of your game. Graze, not glaze. So remember, don't, don't stare. Talk to the whole entire crowd. Next up on stage etiquette, I want to talk about the dramatic pause, right? A dramatic pause. Well, you're probably saying like, this is, I mean, I just got into this, this beginning class. I didn't know I was gonna have some dramatic pause thing I had to, to do. Okay, well, dramatic pause is also a way to cheat and kind of formulate what you're gonna say when you're saying something, when you're doing something and announcing. So sometimes what I use when it comes down to it on a dramatic pause, is if I'm trying to think of the next thing to say, 
I give you that dramatic pause right there so I could come up with the next thing to say. See how I did that? So that's a dramatic pause. Now, you're like, that's dramatic? No, but it's better than using filler words. And filler words is something I cover in a lot of my more advanced classes that if you move on from this, when you do, you'll learn about filler words. And what you want to try to do is avoid those. And just to give you a little thing about filler words, filler words are like, um, and uh, but, uh, and um, and you'd like to not do those. Those are something you want to avoid. So when it comes down to the dramatic pause, that avoids using them because you stop what you're saying, finish your sentence. There's no need to say end um afterwards. You just go to the next thing. So the dramatic pause, so, so important in formulating what you're going to see or what you're going to say, I should say. Audience reaction is another part of this that's very important too as well. There's so many times when you could be on a stage, and this doesn't have to be at a competition event. This could just be on a stage announcing anything at all. It just could be having speakers one after another, okay? You need to be able to wait for the audience reaction. So what that means is what you need to do at that point is if the audience is reacting to a certain person, then what you want to do is you want to wait for them to finish their reaction before you start talking again. And that's something that not everyone really realizes that one right there. It's something that's very important and it's often kind of missed when it comes right down to it. You're eager, you're thinking about what you're going to say, you want to talk, the audience is clapping from the last person. Just let them have their time and cheer and do whatever. Let the audience react to whatever's going on. And even if it's booing, you want the audience to react before you break in. Kind of an easy thing when it comes down to it. You just have to wait. And one of the things that I like to do when it comes, this is kind of new to you, but if you ever, when you're ever announcing and you get a chance to announce on something that you're doing, and let's say a speaker is up before you and you're coming on after the speaker, you know what I always like to do in that situation? And I'm just going to give you a little Brad J tip right here. This is, that's all I'm trying to do is what you do in that situation is when you walk up the stage before you start, you say, please put your hands together to the speaker that was just there or the people that are putting on the event, right? That gets the crowd all of a sudden, boom, 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 and it helps. It's a nice transition to get you into what you're going to say. I kind of look at it as kind of the, a movie analogy. And a movie analogy, when, you're, when you go to a movie, it's supposed to make you feel all the emotions, sad, happy, glad, scared. Those are, those are the emotions that you're supposed to go through at a movie, and that's what makes movies successful, is because if you're on a roller coaster of emotions at a movie and you're going through the highs and the lows, you feel like a vested interest, and when you come out of there, it's like, wow, that was amazing. You can do the same thing in announcing. You can do it in a way where when I'm announcing sporting events and I'm introducing somebody, I will actually introduce the person starting out soft and build into it for more applause is what I will do. So I will start first up. He's a two-time champion, the recent gold medal winner from the Olympic Games here today to defend his gold medal. Put your hands together and see how my voice rises with it, okay? So that builds the emotion when it comes down to what you're trying to do, you're trying to build the emotion, you're trying to get the people to have a vested interest and pay attention to what you're doing. So all that stuff makes a big difference. So let's recap, body posture, so important. When you're walking around the stage, what do you do with your hands? Well, you see what I'm doing with my hands? I'm kind of used to that, that's body posture. You wanna do nice, controlled, Stand at attention, chest out, feel good about what you're doing, slouch, don't be moving, don't be twitching, don't be doing that body posture, very important. Graze, not glaze. I don't care how big the crowd is. If it's 10 people, if it's 10,000 people, graze the crowd. That means scan the crowd. Don't get caught staring at one person and let it take you out of your game, especially if that person's like making faces or whatever. That could ruin your whole thing. So if you're grazing and not paying attention to anyone's particular, that works, okay? Dramatic pause. The dramatic pause. Always important. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to say next, so 
That's why I do the pause. So dramatic pause, very important. Okay, well, let's bring it down to the story. Always love to end with one of the stories of things that have happened to me over the years. So today's story, oh, I'll take it back to a major award show for television that I was doing in Las Vegas. I'm not going to say the name of who I was working for. So this is a big award show where I'm supposed to give out 20 to 30 awards in this like hour and a half program. Well, think about it. 20 or 30 awards in an hour and a half program, that's boring, right? Think about this. They give me a script. The script is this thick, okay? I'm looking at this script going, all right, well, I ask them, I go, do I have any leeway? Do I have to read the script? And I go, no, you just stay with the script. So I'm like, okay. So I went out there and there's, I don't know, 2,000 people there. So I'm talking to these 2,000 people doing the awards, and I'm reading it script page after page after page. And I start looking at the crowd, and they're not paying attention. They're not even listening to me. They're talking amongst themselves because I am just white noise. I am this stack of paper that I have to read. And so I'm thinking to myself, shoot, I better think quick here. So what do I do? I did what any normal person would do. I condensed it, and I went freestyle on that, okay? I knew the categories of the awards I was announcing. I knew the top three. I just went into that way, and I worked the crowd. I made the crowd make some noise for each individual athlete. That was the way it worked right there. That was how I made it work. I saw that people weren't paying attention. I'm doing this long award show. It's going to be a long night. People aren't even being quiet while I'm announcing so I went freestyle, I went rogue, and I just filled it my own. And you know what? The people who handed me the sheets and all the info, they didn't even know I did that. They didn't say a word. All they said was, you did such an amazing job at that. Wow, we can't wait to have you do the awards next year. And they had no idea that I basically took that whole stack, like a foam book of paper, and threw that away. And that, my friends, stage etiquette right there. Thanks for tuning in. Tammy Talent.